yeah, you can brush it off and say, oh, like, this person's suffering with mental health, or this person's gambling, or this person's an alcoholic, right, this yeah. person's got an addiction. But unless you truly, truly, truly understand it, then mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can ever pass comment or judgment on that person. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this the whole situation with Amy Winehouse? Mm. Yes. Where it was like, she, where she, I wasn't, if you correct, do correct me if I'm wrong, but did she not die of alcohol poisoning or something, or something to do with alcohol or not having alcohol or something like that? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Along those lines, wasn't it? Along those lines, yeah. yeah. She just became yeah. Amy House. Mm. Mm. Got, yeah, she, I know. Yes. I did, I did hear um, from, from a friend that watched the, uh, the documentary, the newest one, that what she did, she, when she came out of rehab and she was sober, she said, you know, I feel healthier, but this is so boring. I but think that's they, why yeah. we had to do research for this film. Because yeah. I think yeah. if we just went into it reading a script and just reading off lines, the compassion would not have come across the way it did on the screen. We had to literally do the research, really get into people's heads, try to understand the problem. And I think that's one of the biggest things of recent years is, yeah, you can brush it off and say, oh, like, this person's suffering with mental health, or this person's gambling, or this person's an alcoholic, right, this yeah. person's got an addiction. But unless you truly, truly, truly understand it, then mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can ever pass comment or judgment on that person. No. To understand it, no. you, you even need to know them really, really fucking well, or you need to be them. Like, to the point I mean know them so well that you know why they're drinking so, like, and why they're doing this. Not individual people, like, say, for example, because I've, I've done the research online and I've read all these stories. I don't know these people. I'm just reading their stories online. I'm reading blogs. So these aren't just news stories and articles. These are, like, stories from actual gamblers. Mm. And yeah, so yeah. you kind of get to know them, even though you mm. don't know them, you know, yeah. because you're reading their life basically on their blog, <laughs> and you you've got to really understand it. And mm. I think we were successful in pushing that message across on the screen, that and showing the understanding. And I am hoping that we did do that on the screen, if that makes sense, if you know what I mean. I think we did push yeah. the message like across and we showed all aspects of like how Thomas was marrying your sister Melanie. That's right, um, yeah. Um, do you think like going back to the storyline of Is It Worth It that like say for example like obviously t um, Brian had a gambling addiction before and it was the casinos and the horses and everything else and he's mm -hmm. been there, he's wore the t-shirt. If Brian was not an ex-gambler do you think he would have actually like not been as compassionate and not allowed to go the wedding to go ahead and been more sort of forceful and adamant you're point blank you're not marrying my sister Probably. Mm. uh maybe yeah i i, I believe he would yeah mm. yeah it would have been. yeah yeah what do you think um so I like to I like to go and think different endings and different like outcomes and possibilities <laughs> if that makes sense. I like to see the yeah he would have been more adamant. You're not marrying my sister. End of. Yeah. But then I yeah. kind of like have that hope in me that okay if Brian wasn't a gambler, he might have actually done some research and still like well the Thomas is a nice guy. I still want him to marry my sister. I just don't know how to help him. Yeah.